Hi, everyone. Um, we look like a bit like a So Solid crew up here with so many of us. We've got a couple more waiting in the wings as well. Uh, you got yourself plugged in? It's quite fast, come to come up. So I'm Matty Bryars. I'm CEO and co-founder of um, AI Foria. And um, we've built a, um, an API that makes it super easy, safe, for you to deploy at scale um, voice AI solutions into your platform, whether it's uh, you're a telco or um, you're a CCAS or UCAS platform, um, we can support you. Basically, you send us some audio along with what we call a tag or multiple tags, and that explains to us what you want to do with it, whether or not it's uh, analysis or do an action, and then we send you some cool stuff back. But today's about showing you some stuff, so um, we're gonna get onto that pretty quickly. There are two ways that you can use our API. You can interact with us in bulk, so for example, you might have a massive amount of call recordings, you can send those to us and we'll give you the results back. Or you can work with us mid-call live and we can give you some results back so you can um, affect the journey of a call whilst you're talking to someone. The tags, as we call them, uh, fall into different categories, such as language, like transcription or translation, summarization we've heard a lot about today, um, you can do bespoke summarization, which is really quite interesting. Data extraction, I want specific information out of a call. And data augmentation, I want to know more about something that's in a call and I want you to add to it. And then generative, which is creating content based about the conversation that's taken place with your customer. Um, there are loads of library tags that you can just use. But more interesting, there's a the customer ability to build tags. So Don, our head of applied AI, is going to talk about um, the tags in a bit more detail. Hi, good morning, everybody. Yes, so um, we've been talking about customer experience today, and I think providing great customer experience starts with understanding holistically what's happening with your customer interactions and um, all of the data science and BI capabilities that you can see on the right-hand side of this chart offer a lot of value to doing that. You can understand data at scale. Um, unfortunately, if you're taking a transcript, um, they're not really the ideal candidate to feed into BI and data science pipelines. If you've been involved in such a project, you probably know that kind of 90% of the work is about data quality and, and converting and preparing data so that you can unlock those capabilities. And that's our philosophy with tags, basically, is to work on your data to take your business logic and your client's business logic process the semantics of those transcripts or your own data, and then convert it into something that feeds neatly into your BI pipelines and your data science pipelines. Thank you. So first of all, we're going to get involved with um, mid-call live analysis. And Steve's going to jump up and um, just talk about how he's looking to use the, um, the API. Cheers, Steve. No worries. Hi, everyone. It's great to see quite a few familiar faces. But for those of you who don't know me, I'm Steve Murray. Um, line of business director at IPI, I'm responsible for our sort of CX division, so DevOps, product, channel. Um, and our purpose as a business is referred to as exceptional customer contact. Now, we do that through a range of CX and digital transformation products. And the focus of the stuff we've been doing with, with Matt and the team is really around using that API for that real-time analysis. We've been playing with AI, I suppose you could say, since about 2008 when we built our first sort of speech recognition products. But I think what we've been really impressed with with the AI Fourier API is the speed and rapidity which we can get uh, responses back. And I think you were going to go through onto the next part now. So where this is really powerful, for example, is we previously used sort of bot vendors such as Microsoft and Google. Um, and what they're very good at is broad intent understanding, so I want to order a pizza. You know, they're good at understanding that. Where they're not so great is things like specific data sets, like say a number plate. So we've got a lot of big UK insurers who use our voice bot capability. Uh, and that's where those, those, those platforms fall down. Where we've been able to really accelerate that with the guys is, is through building specific tags. Again, through something like that, uh, being able to recognize that UK-based number plate uh, in a very rapid way at scale and at a much lower cost, and that's been really powerful. Thanks, Steve. Um, so now the real fun, uh, live demo, um, and I get the joy of doing that. So this is our um, tag creation uh, playground. Effectively, this allows Steve's team to take 
an idea or a customer premise that they're looking for, number plates is that example there, um, and generate a tag, as Matt was explaining earlier. Um, so I'm just gonna go through here. You can um, use existing tags, you can uh, change a tag, so maybe um, you've got a new brand of coffee you want to get in here, so you can select the coffee tag, um, or you can start with a brand new blank tag. Um, I'm gonna look for categories of animals. Um, when I go and generate this, it will go away in the background and create me all of the categories that uh, are suggested by the, uh, by the solution. And by that, the categories are super important because they're not just um, looking for words or specific things. You can see here that it's looking for insects, for example, and it's using the LLM to make sure that it can understand the, the context of the transcript and generate something useful. Um, once we've got that, this solution actually allows you to then go and generate some test data. So we know as developers and, um, uh, and getting customers to use things that it needs to work first time. And as Don was explaining earlier, it needs the, the raw data in the background needs to be as accurate as possible to make sure that what, what you're seeing and using um, works. And from an AI point of view, if it's not there or it's not picking things up, it's, it can very quickly get sidelined. So we generate three scripts. Those scripts uh, you can edit. I can come here and put in my own transcript. I could upload an audio file and we'll do that later. Um, but then you can take these three generated scripts. It knows it's talking about animal categories, so it's generating me something relatively specific to animals. And then I go to apply tags. Um, and on here, it will show me what it's applied. So for each of those scripts. So I can see here that um, we're not specifically talking about birds on this line here. We're talking about toucans, but because it understands the context um, of birds, it's done this. Uh, I can then script, flip to the second script and check that's still working. A lot of talk about mammals there. And on the third script, again, we've got different tags here. So maybe I'm looking for reptiles, uh, talking about crocodiles at the zoo, for example, and it's brought that up perfectly. Um, once I save this tag here, if I'm happy with my list of categories, I can tweak them, edit them, delete them, add more, um, run it again. Once I'm happy with that, I can save it, and it's live there and then, and I'll show you that later. Uh, so we have a generative uh, SDK that we use to further extend the functionality uh, of what James just showed. Um, it writes a lot of the code for us. Um, uh, here we add a learning life cycle to the tag so that, so, that it, uh, <coughs> so that it will incorporate unencountered categories that it comes across whilst maintaining consistency over big data. We can also set it so that instead of running over every single tag, it runs over a sample so that we don't have to pay for all of our data be, to be analyzed, but get real-time trends. Yeah, unfortunately, the video's not showing very clearly, but um, you, the, I can tell you from a developer point of view that being able to test your data inside Visual Studio is so powerful, and, and uh, that's been built in from the, from the ground up. Grant, do you want to come up and just quickly, so we talked a bit about mid-live stuff, I'm going to show some examples of some making some phone calls in a bit, and um, Grant's going to jog across here and grab this mic. Um, Grant, can you just explain what you want to do about post-call analysis? Absolutely, so uh, I'm Grant Janaway, I look after the payment security uh, depart department in Vodafone uh, in cybersecurity, and obviously, as you can quite clearly see on the screen, my key uh, focuses are identifying credit card details. Now, we already have got a supplier in which suppresses and removes the card data from our environment. However, what we're using this tool to do will be to identify if it's picking up from a customer's point of view. So a, 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 somebody will be entering in the details, and as they type in their number, they read it out by accident. It will also help us identify if agents are going rogue um, and taking down details that they shouldn't be or asking questions regarding card details that they shouldn't be. Um, now, 15 minutes isn't very long, so I'm gonna speed through this redaction demo. Um, but effectively, the tag generator here actually lets me do anything I like. So if I was to do um, uh, people named uh, James, for example, it'll go away and generate me a tag about people named James. When that comes back, I can save that tag as a redaction tag. So we've got here different types of Jameses, um, and I can so simply select here a redact or an extract or an analysis, as Matt was explaining earlier, with the different options. Um, uh, then I can go and see those tags applied. So once I'd saved that 
type of tag, I could then go over here and go to my um, redaction version. And uh, just from a time point of view, you'll see that it's very quickly pulled out any data that was mentioning a James in the script here and redacted it in an FBI style um, redaction piece. It, as well as um, redacting from the transcripts, we also redact from audio as well, so you get the calls back better clean as well. So Grant can um, take those that uh, what might be termed as toxic data and turn it into untoxic data. You'll also note that we've run a couple of tags across here. So we've run a PII redaction. We could do a um, sort code and account number redaction, et cetera, at the same time. So one API, multiple tags, um, and multiple bits of data. Um, and just very quickly, the, uh, the, a way to visualize that data that comes back, because we're running it in real time, you can see across occurrences and across time data that's coming back by agent, et cetera. And Don's going to dig into a bit of data that we've generated this morning for you. Yes, thank you. With kind permission from Don Black, um, we recorded his session this morning just on, a, on an iPhone. And um, to ramp up the jeopardy, we, um, we tagged our, um, we, we tracked his conversation. And you can see that it's, so first up, we inherited these, um, we inferred these categories from the, the conversation that we was having. So you can see that market trends scores very highly, opportunities for providers. These have been kind of generated on the fly. And then if I wanted to, for example, drill into perhaps, okay, margin reduction, that sounds interesting, what was said there, I can jump back to the raw transcript, get into exactly what was said, the reported speech, and filter out the data and see precisely what was said. So this is a tag that was created just this morning and we're able to return and use the results very, very quickly. You can also see that we're API providers, not UI providers. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's your job. Cool. Right. So another project that we're doing for someone, which is quite cool, is a voicemail AI assistant. So we've all got voicemail. I get wrong. Someone leaves a message. I don't listen to it for three weeks, maybe, if ever, because voicemail sucks. So what we've done is we've built a voicemail AI assistant that when you get called, the AI assistant answers it, and we're just going to demo it. So should we do that? Here we go. Nothing like a live demo. Right. Hi, oh, yeah, this is uh, Matthew. I'd like to go out for lunch with you, James, on Saturday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Thanks. Give me a few seconds, and I will see if I can help you with that myself. If not, James can get back to you when he is free. So in the background, it is... just getting your details from James's contact list. In the background, it's looking up Matthew. He's in my contact list in Outlook. So it's done a data dip. It's pulled his address. It's checked my calendar. It's gone away and confirmed that I'm free at that time. It sent a meeting invite out to me uh, and a Slack message, which has just appeared on my watch, to confirm that um, the meeting has been booked. Um, and it will then send that invite out to both of us. Hi, right, James is example. unavailable. I am his AI assistant here to help. Or you can leave a message. Hi, James. This is a school calling. Um, really sorry, but your son has had an accident, had to be taken to the local A&E. Um, it's an urgent message for you. Please, can you um, contact the local um, hospital or make you aware there as soon as possible? Nothing like tempting fate. Give me a few seconds, and I will see if I can help you with that myself. If not, James can get back to you when he is free. So again. That sounds important. I have sent it to all of James's devices, along with your contact information. He in this case, it's detected, in, it's detected that audio is urgent. It's Anything detected else that it's talking about something that I would care about. And it's thank broadcasted you. that to everything. So I'll get a Slack message, an SMS message. It could even ring me, send me an email, whatever. Ed, 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 any data dip that we wanted to do off the back of that could be achieved. Um, again, in that Hi, case, James it doesn't unavailable. Really check who you are. Sorry, last example I do. Or you can leave a message. Bonjour, je voudrais acheter deux pommes de terre, s'il vous plaît. Merci. <laughs> Thanks. Give me a few seconds, and I will see if I can help you with that myself. If not, James can get back to you when he is free. Okay. I have sent James a copy of your message. Bonjour. Je voudrais acheter deux pommes de terre, s'il vous plaît. Merci. Hello. I would like to buy two potatoes, please. <laughs> Thank you. So again, just Anything another example of the no. API in real time, getting that audio, detecting that it's in a different language, translating it. It knows I can't speak French, nor can Matt, it turns out. <laughs> um, but it will translate that for me, send me that voice message in English, uh, but keeps the original context if I needed it. And if anyone wanted to know whether or not a, um, 
AI is better than a human. That's just proof <laughs> that it is. Uh, and then really quickly, we're going to do one more example. Do you want to do it on mine? And this is a futures thing. So all of that stuff that we've shown you now is, is available now. But um, this is a really quick futures thing where we've done a proof of concept for um, live interaction with a, with a large language model. My name is Paul. Nice to meet you, Paul. How can I assist you today? Can you tell me what's happening in the world of AI? Sure. Here are some recent developments in the world of AI. No, One, can you AI tell me what is happening in the world of telephony AI? I apologize, but without more information or context, I am unable to provide an answer. <laughs> can you tell me a joke? Can you Here's a joke for you. Why couldn't the bicycle stand up by itself? Because it was too tired. Oh, there we go. So what that's doing is predicting when I'm about to finish what speaking like so it can um, pre-fetch an answer so that you've got, you delay, you, you shorten the delays in between speaking because there needs to be less than 1.4 seconds um, for a new conversation to have a, a quick conversation. So uh, there's some really cool stuff that we can do and we've run out of time, but um, we're here to support you to do cool stuff with AI and voice. If you've got any questions you want to talk to us, come and have a chat with any of us. You can't miss us. And um, yeah, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.